It may look like a water park amusement ride for salmon, but this is the way hatchery Chinook are marked for identification when they return to Puget Sound as adults. Their adipose fin is clipped and 200,000 of them will also be injected with identification tags. To solve the salmon problem is the same problem as trying to solve the orca problem. It's, it's all interwoven. Uh, it's not just one piece is going to fix this big, huge problem that we have. Laylup Salmon Hatchery Assistant Manager Jesse Rood and his colleagues are working to improve the health and survival of the fish they release. Instead of releasing them all at one time, which is standard protocol, they're now experimenting with three release dates by changing water temperatures and how much the fish are fed. So we got three different programs early, normal, and late. And the earlies are going to be released here in a couple weeks. The normal group will be released in June, and the late group will be released in August. Governor Inslee has included $12 million in his budget for increased hatchery fish production. And by the rate that they grow in the hatchery and when they're released, that can affect how many come back and how big they are. Like they might stay in the ocean an extra year and uh, come back as a larger adult. And that's what we're trying to come up with. But studies have shown that hatchery fish can have a negative impact on wild fish if special precautions aren't taken. Making sure we're not just dumping fish into a system with a bunch of wild fish um, and they're both competing for food and just making sure that we're not outplaying anything. And if we are, if we are having an effect, what exactly are our effects and are they adverse effects or is the effect not really creating any major issues? Trevor Jennison manages one of the state hatcheries, producing all that extra Chinook to help feed the southern resident killer whales. The fish that come back, it's, it, they're 80% hatchery fish, right? It's just the way it is. And uh, if we don't rear hatchery fish well um, and effectively, then, you know, we're, we're, we're not doing a service uh, to, to the whales, to the fishermen or anything and and at the same time what well, we ultimately want to get to the point where we have wild fish. Michael Schmidt is deputy director of Long Live the Kings, a group that's studying why threatened fish like salmon and steelhead aren't making it out of Puget Sound to the open ocean where they grow to adulthood. Salmon are the lifeblood of Tulalip and that's who we are. So it's very important to each and every tribal member out here because we are the people of the salmon. Hi, I'm King 5 environmental reporter Allison Morrow. Check out our Saving the Orcas playlist for more videos like this one. Make sure to subscribe to the King 5 channel to get alerts when there's a new video published. What topic do you want us to cover next? Let us know in the comments below.